Democratic lawmaker Ro Khanna became the very first Democrat in Congress to call for Senator Dianne Feinstein, a fellow Democrat, to resign from the Senate. Now, in a tweet, he writes, it's time for Senator Feinstein to resign. We need to put the country ahead of personal loyalty. While she has had a lifetime of public service, it is obvious she can no longer fulfill her duties. Not speaking out undermines our credibility as elected representatives of the people. Every single word and every single line in that tweet is exactly right, if you ask me, it's just my opinion. And once you get to the details of what Senator Feinstein is unable to do as a result of her condition, you'll understand why it's important for fellow Democrats to urge her to resign. She's just not able to do her job and she's a United States Senator, it's a problem. Yeah, look guys, we're gonna show you a video in a second, but we've shown you many videos before. Dianne Feinstein is not mentally fit, period, not close. Does not know what's going on around her. In fact, on the day that her staff put out a statement saying that she's gonna retire at the end of this term, reporters went to go ask her about it and she's like, no, I'm not. Oh, did they put that out? She doesn't know anything. It's not her fault at this point. Look, I think Diane Feinstein was a terrible politician. I don't agree with mainstream media at all. I thought she was ter- hugely conservative in one of the most progressive states. She was a total corporate sellout. I have no respect for her. I don't believe anything mainstream media says about, oh my God, she did two things in her 88 year career. It's just, it's all fraud. But this is not Diane Feinstein. And honestly, this is not her fault. This is a person who's now lost mental capacity. It's her staff that's pretending that Diane Feinstein is still mentally capable. So my question is a genuine question. The fact that all of Washington media is treating it as if these are Diane Feinstein's statements is weird. Like you all know she's not saying it and she's not of the right mind. She can't possibly say something that like she changes her mind every second. You guys know how Alzheimer's dementia, et cetera, works. I don't know exactly what she has. But anyway, my my important question is, who's the actual acting US Senator from California? That's a good question. That's a really good question. Because it's definitely not Diane Feinstein. So is it her chief of staff? Is it her communications director? Who is in charge and the actual Senator from California? And by the way, look, we don't know the makeup of her staff, but I I wanna be fair to the few staff members who have been raising the alarms and have been talking to the press, obviously on the condition of anonymity, because they do see it as a problem. But I have no doubt that there are people who want her to remain in office for whatever reason, either to protect their own jobs or this sounds too conspiratorial and I almost feel bad saying it, but it feels almost, exploitative, right? I mean, where you have a United States Senator who clearly is not mentally fit to do her job, yet she's still in the Senate. Um, She still gets to cast votes uh, on some things. But what brought this to, what what motivated Rokana to basically come forward about this is that she lately really hasn't been able to do her job. Uh, Recently, she's been um, suffering from shingles, apparently, Feinstein, um, who's on the Senate Judiciary Committee, has not been able to be present to vote to confirm judges. That's a really big problem. So she has missed 60 votes of the 82 taken in 2023 so far, including two prior to her illness. Uh, Of her votes, she has missed while ill 25 were for judicial nominees, pretty important here. Three of whom were appointed to California federal courts and 13 were for executive branch nominees. All of those nominees advance, but Feinstein's absence impacts whether nominees are brought up for a committee vote. So that's a problem. Now, Dick Durbin, who is the Senate Judiciary Committee chairman, acknowledged that her absence was in fact slowing things down significantly. He says, quote, I can't consider nominees in these circumstances because a tie vote is a losing vote in committee, Durbin said. Asked if her absence has longer ramifications on the Democrats' ability to confirm nominees, the Senate chairman said, yes, of course it does, pointing to the long process of getting nominees scheduled for votes during uh, precious floor time. 
who there are Democratic lawmakers who disagree with this, which I think is insane. Nancy Pelosi being one of them, obviously she's in the House of Representatives. And Nancy Pelosi is doing what I find so abhorrent and I find many Democrats doing all the time, which is they weaponize identity to get what they want. So Pelosi is like, this is just sexism. Except it's not, she's not mentally fit for the job. This is not sexism, it's obvious, it's clear. There's evidence to make that point. Weaponizing identity is ridiculous in this case. Yeah, so it's a classic uh, corporate Democrat trick. Um, oh, she's mentally unfit, you're sexist. <laughs> What, what does that have to do with this? What are you talking about, right? So if a woman or any minority becomes mentally unfit, we're not allowed to talk about it. We can only talk about it if it's like white males or something. This is insanity, total insanity, no, no. And But this is the, the reason Nancy Pelosi says crap like that, because it's catnip for mainstream media. They love that stuff because they wanna protect whoever's the acting senator, the chief of staff who's going to do exactly as they are told. So um, they're like, oh yeah, let's all pretend that Dianne Feinstein's the actual senator and mentally capable. Oh, And if anybody says otherwise, let's call them sexist, whatever. So look, Ro Khanna, I don't know why he did it, but it was courageous of him to do it because mm -hmm. in Washington, they'll hate you for saying things that are obviously true, especially about your own party. And finally, the video that you were referencing earlier, Cenk, this is Dianne Feinstein having some difficulty during a Senate hearing. Let's watch. On November 7, President Trump tweeted, and I quote, I won this election by a lot, end quote. Obviously, that's not true. President Trump lost the election. The warning label that Twitter has applied to the tweet says, and I quote, official sources may not have called the race when this was tweeted, end quote. Do you believe that label goes far enough to prevent the tweet's harms when the tweet is still visible and not accurate? I do because it's not just the surface level label. Well, let me give you a specific. On November 7, President Trump tweeted this, I won this election by a lot. The warning label that Twitter has applied to the tweet says, and I quote, official sources may not have called the race when this was tweeted, end quote. Now, here's the question, does that label do enough to prevent the tweet's harms when the tweet is still visible and is not accurate? I, I, God, it's just so heartbreaking to watch that. And I'm actually gonna go, not only am I gonna speak against Nancy Pelosi and how ridiculous it is to say it's sexist to ask for Senator Feinstein to step down. I think it's actually incredibly cruel to her to encourage her to remain in office when I, that's just, I, that was so hard to watch. How could anyone think this is okay? And Anna, that was a while back. I know. She's gotten worse now. And there are reports that Chuck Schumer goes and talks to her and tells her like, hey, look, we gotta, sorry, but we can't be the head of the Judiciary Committee. This was a while back. Now she's, they're putting in a replacement for her altogether on the committee. But before she used to be the head of the committee. But Schumer went and talked to her and said, look, you're having issues. We can't have you be the head of the Judiciary Committee. She goes, okay, I got it, I understand. The next day she goes up to Schumer. And doesn't remember the conversation at all. And Schumer has to repeat, remember, you're not the head of the Judiciary Committee anymore. We agreed to it yesterday. She's like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. And that was a while back. No, they're literally wheeling her out. This is disgusting. And you know who's responsible? You know, some people are blaming the family. It's, I think, it's super fair to blame the staff at her office. But at the end of the day, it's the Democratic Party they're, and mm -hmm. mainstream yes. media that are agreeing to this fiction that she's actually mentally competent and the actual senator from California. It's it's preposterous. I'm glad that at least one congressman had the courage to call out what is obviously true. 
And it's encouraging other congressmen to speak out as well. Um, if you guys could bring up that second graphic here, because there's another Democratic lawmaker, Representative Dean Phillips. I'm sure that you're not gonna love the wording of this, Jenk, but the sentiment is accurate. He says, I agree with Ro Khanna. He could have just stopped there. Senator Feinstein is a remarkable American whose contributions to our country are immeasurable, but I believe it's now a dereliction of duty to remain in the Senate and a dereliction of duty for those who agree to remain quiet. And so what Ro Khanna did was so important for multiple reasons, obviously for getting the message out as a fellow Democrat, but people are scared. Let's just keep it real. A lot of people are cowards. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican. And sometimes you need the first person to just state the obvious publicly to encourage others to say what everyone's thinking, except for some women in the House, like Nancy Pelosi and Representative Norma Torres, who think this is just sexism. Yeah, look, guys, there might be some politics behind the scenes here too, because if Feinstein is forced to step down, then Governor Newsom gets to appoint the next U.S. Senator, and then that person will have probably a significant advantage as they go to the new election, because right now Adam Schiff. Barbara Lee and Katie Porter are all running for that seat. If Newsom picks one of them, they're gonna have a huge leg up. And I don't want Gavin Newsom picking that seat. So I'm speaking against our own political interest here. But you have to be honest, even if it's not in your political interests. This is a bad situation. And but speaking of politics and how important it is, just to double down on what Anna is saying. The rate at which we uh, approve liberal judges is while we have a Democratic president is enormously important because the Republicans push forward so many conservative judges, like the one that just ruled against the abortion pill and the two that backed it up in the appeals court, right? So the conservatives pile into the judiciary whenever they're in charge, and then they bottleneck it when the Democrats are in charge. Now Feinstein is accidentally helping them bottleneck all of these liberal judges. And that is a dereliction of duty and totally unacceptable. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.